Welcome back to the Eternum Labs podcast. Today we have a crazy exciting guest onto the show, Tim Biohacker. Stick around because we get into all things amazing. We get into the fundamentals of biohacking and health and energy. We talk about what it really means to be a biohacker and how you can actually hack and do all these things for your health and your fitness. We actually get into the deep and like philosophy philosophy side of things as well in terms of actually being an ultimate human and being able to perform at your peak and what's really, really important. And obviously, it was really great to talk to Tim about these things. And if you guys are interested in anything that Eternum Labs have, have to offer, you can head to our website, eternumlabs.com.au, and you can punch in the code Corey, C-R-E-Y, to get 10% off. So without any further ado, guys, we hope you enjoy this podcast. We hope you get something out of it. And if you do, please give us a like, share, or subscribe. That would really help us out. And yes, we hope you love this podcast as much as we did, and we'll see you on the inside. Tim, thank you so much for coming on to the show, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Oh, good. I'd like to just start this conversation off with, you know, what are some things that you've been learning or trialing, testing recently? Because I know you are obviously Tim Biohacker, you're crazy in the biohacks. I'd like to know what's new in your world at the moment. Um, That's a really, really good question. And first of all, guys that's listening or watching, it's it's early in the morning here because of the time difference between us. So if I'm not looking quite so refreshed, it's because I haven't done enough grounding and I haven't even finished my uh, bulletproof coffee or aminos yet. So (laughs) bear with me. Usually I don't even take calls until 11 a.m. just in my morning routine. But anyway, um, so I think um, over the last 10 years of biohacking, from being a complete novice of just popping 20 different supplements because I read about how each of these things would help me. And don't get me wrong, like many specialists I've met along the way couldn't believe the stuff that I've done, or should I said really admire how much dedication and how many things I'd reversed and and whatnot um, without professional help up to a point. Um, You think more is better, you know, and it's the same with gym goers, more reps is better. Um, more coffee is better, more nootropics is better, more stimulants is better, more sex is better, all this stuff. It's not necessarily the case, but it took me a long time um, to realize that, you know, taking 20 or 30 different things, which all have impacts on you that you can't necessarily measure, that's where the novice begins. I want red light therapy. I want blue light therapy. I want grounding. I want this supplement. I want that supplement. This new supplement that's come out by this guru is the best one in the world and it's going to save my life. You know, the usual stuff. As time went on, I collected more and more stuff. And don't get me wrong, I've got probably four or 500 different types of supplements that are sent to me to try, <laughs> you know, and then test them out individually. And technologies, you know, like I've got a, an air pollution meter here and I've got a lumen device here and I've got some oxygen spray for sanitizer here and I've got some dim here. I mean, this is and some copper peptides. You know, this is just some stuff that's in my near vicinity, let alone in the whole room. So my point is, is that more doesn't equal better. And now it's great to have fun with these things, just like sex is for reproduction. So you can have kids or it's fun. Now it's fun so that we do reproduce that the species obviously continues. But the point is, is it's okay to do stuff for health and it's all right to do stuff because you enjoy it. Now where I'm getting to with this, and I feel like it's a long answer, but I think it's important for people that are starting on their journey or don't necessarily, or or absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that's going on in this space. And all the experts are telling you that they're right is that simplicity is key. And I have learned to let go of nearly every single device nearly every single supplement with with a few exceptions and understand that simplicity is key and changing one thing or doing one thing at a time means that you can measure and improve and know what is doing what for instance if you're eating a a packet meal a processed packet meal that might be your thing that's fine by me but If it's got 150 different ingredients in it, and after this packet meal, you get a migraine every day, every time, wouldn't you want to know what one ingredient it is that's causing that? The answer is yes, because then you could eliminate it. Now, the ultimate answer is cut out all the crap and eat organic 
unprocessed food because you don't have that issue. But the point is, is you're able to isolate it. So simplicity is key. Remove everything you can, get the basics in place. The fundamentals of health is what I call them these days. Yeah. And start from there. Yeah. How's That's that been? My- yeah, I love that. So how's that been applying for you recently? Well, okay. I'll, I'll try and keep it short this time, but... Um, for instance, I've just got back from having five months of traveling around Europe. Okay. I did the same last year for three and a half months. Whilst I was in Croatia, swimming in the sea every day for half an hour to an hour, whatever, while I was having natural wild caught fish every day. Um, I didn't really need to buy a hack. Nice. And I love that. I come back to London and don't get me wrong, I've got a nice place. It's not in the middle of the city. It's, you know, kind of a little bit north. We've got nice garden park around us. My heart rate variability halves. My resting heart rate increases by 10 to 15 beats a minute. And I'm trying like a motherfucker <laughs> or optimize to get my heart rate variability back to where it was in nature. And it wasn't even majorly nature. It's, you know, like an apartment next to the beach. So, <laughs> like, I love it. You know, like, and the, a line that I've said probably for three or four years, and I've, I've been connecting these dots for a while, but is that we're using technology to mimic nature. You know, I'm standing on a wooden floor where I'm not grounding, but I have a grounding mouse mat right here. You know, um, I'm not outside in the sun, but I've got a window right here. So, you know, I've got the blinds. It doesn't ruin us on the podcast. But the point is, is so, you know, trying to get natural light through a pane of glass. Um, I'm I'm not off hunting animals first thing in the morning. So I'm drinking a high fat coffee. Um, (laughs) I've I've not got my face in a stream drinking mineral rich water. I'm drinking reverse osmosis. Uh, um carbonated water with added celtic sea salt which i've also got right here you know i mean simplicity as i say is key and if you haven't got the basics right you're going to be doing all this stuff trying to hack your health and i know people that it's not necessarily a sexy saying oh get your shoes off and stand in the garden or you know go for a swim in the sea every morning if you stop and imagine your feet in the sea right now, standing with the tide lapping at your uh, toes, it changes you physiologically immediately. We have an emotional response to it. And that is just imagination, let alone actually being there and having the free electrons that you're getting from the ground and negative ions from the air. I mean, you know, I think with current times, the word not to be mentioned, and having been locked down and things like that, we now appreciate that. Cities are amazing for networking and hanging out with people and being able to go out for a meal at whatever time of day or going to a theater at one o'clock in the morning or staying at an all night rave, if that's your thing, until 6 a.m. on a Monday morning. But really the stillness and nature is really what makes us feel much happier and healthier. And these things are best implemented. But if you are in a city like me, an earthing mouse mat and a red light therapy stack and a seasonal affective disorder lamp and a a ketone meter and 200 different supplements might help you get back to your goal, but you're never going to beat it. (laughs) That's crazy. Almost makes you want to just move away to the wilderness. I remember I, um, I saw a post of yours because I remember it was like a few years ago, I was actually researching in terms of like what would be the best salt and I landed on Celtic salt. And uh, because comparing all the different things and then I remember seeing a post of yours and I shared it immediately and it was one of the posts that I shared on social media that had so many like, had the most feedback on that ever. And it was like purely just salt. And I thought that was like one of the most <laughs> amazing things. Yeah, I'm super passionate about Celtic salt, man. So thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean, I think the funny thing is, is that like we all want to know that little secret that we're not supposed to know, you know, like for instance, um, think about think about the Freemasons, for instance, and I'm uh, FYI, I was one in the past. They're not evil like everyone thinks they are, but whatever. I'm no longer anymore. Um, the point is, is there's little secrets that people want to know. It's like the curiosity, the you know, like tell me more. I want to know about this handshake, or I want to know about this, or what's this secret thing, or this leaked document about the government, whatever it may be. Like, well, imagine people tell you that 
optimizing your energy and your mental clarity and helping your chronic fatigue can be done by having a little bit of salt in your water. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's like, this is like, and people are like, no, it's almost like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, the whole time. Um, so really that, you know, this is the, this is the type of thing that's hidden in plain sight. And this is really what I talk about now, but you know, I do have, wherever it may be, I'll grab it quickly. Uh, an NAD face mask sent to me to try out. It's supposed to be amazing as well. And actually this is, a, this is one technology I really do like at the moment. It's the V light. So it's internasal infrared light that you put in like this and you look like a complete dork, but um, it really is amazing for mental clarity I find while I'm reading and things. So there are little technologies that I use, but I wouldn't use it while I'm on the beach. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know that's really to answer your question after having a bit of fun, you know, is really that you can't optimize your way out of a bad uh, lifestyle. Yeah. And if you are in the city, you have to understand that you have to do a lot of these things to reverse this crap. Yeah. And like air purifier as well. I mean, the list goes on of all this stuff, you know, and I get sent all this stuff, like probably 150 parcels waiting for me when I got back from traveling. And it's like, I'm in a worse state than I was when I was traveling with basically, you know, four pairs of shorts, two pairs of jeans, five t-shirts and a pair of barefoot shoes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, beautiful place stuff of all this stuff. So, so really this is what it comes back down to is like, but you have to go through that journey to really understand and collecting this stuff and realizing you're not, getting it's not moving the needle that much it's you know everything will help you know or some things will set you back but really you know the beginning is i know when someone's at the beginning of their journey when they message me or when i meet them or whatever because they're like oh, i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm doing that oh, i'm taking this supplement and this supplement and this supplement. i'm like that's amazing but you know eventually you'll learn to let go of this stuff and know that something you know you're uh, it's uh, some things are over sexed and under fucked you know it's like yeah. really um the hype and the market. yeah it is part of the journey as well right though like finding out what's specific for you what what you like and mm -hmm. how you change but man I, I like your message um at the moment after obviously learning and mastering all this stuff it's almost it almost seems to me like very pull check in a way and i, I like all mm -hmm. pull check and his message um for all the stuff that he shares <laughs> i don't actually follow pull check i know the name and his name comes up but i mean there's so many colleagues and speakers and everyone that i engage with and talk to and everything but it, yeah there's one guy that i haven't actually i don't actually know a great deal about i probably should i would love to listen to you guys like you two have a conversation just putting it out there like if you and paul check had a conversation my goodness that would just be wild as well man i have some questions um the world um health summit like the last the last one um mm. man uh, is, are you guys planning one is it this year next year is there yeah, yeah. Uh, health optimization summit yeah, yeah um sorry. No worries. Um, there's a million summits out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, we are. It's end of May 2022. Cool. Um, yeah, and um, it's looking pretty good. I mean, we've got some major announcements coming up in terms of lineup. I can't nice. close that or those just yet. Yep. Um, but it's uh, looking pretty good. Um, we've obviously had nearly three years to plan this one because of this little little thing that's going on in the world uh, that's causing a bit of a disruption. So <laughs> instead of, it's 12 months, we've had like 20 months, I think it is, to build this event. So it's been looking pretty good. Um, it's cost me a bloody fortune. And it's losing a packet, <laughs> it's losing a packet this year round, but, uh, but that's fine. Um, yeah, we've got an awesome lineup. I mean, we've got Jim Quick, Vision from Mind Valley, um, another key biohacker just signed. Um, <laughs> won't go into names. Yep. And um, yeah, we've got uh, about 100 exhibitors signed up and we've got a massive new venue that's full of natural light opposed to the last one which was a conference center which is our biggest feedback was the fake light um, <laughs> obviously if you got a if you got a room full of like thousands of biohackers <laughs> they're going to be looking up like come on man <laughs> you go oops i'm sorry <laughs> i was told it was more like a year four than a year one because of the you know obviously i partnered with upgrade labs at the time dave asprey's yeah. team and paleo -X. Um, so I, I did plenty of due diligence on what we should look out for. And I built it based on that with my team. Um, 
so it was a pretty good event actually i was like people were really impressed that it was year oh, one yeah. so but um um yeah I, i'm really looking forward to it because we're going to be 1500 people this year year one was 1200 people just under wow uh, 100 exhibitors and 50 50 keynote speakers and they're all like the creme de la creme really um yeah. we've got such um this year clint ober um as well um Dude, it's so exciting yeah. it's it's absolutely uh, out of control what do you think was some of the best lessons that you learned from the last one I think the biggest thing that kept me sane and from not jumping off the roof of my apartment, which one day I must admit it was so stressful, is like it was pretty, pretty heavy. I mean, let's be honest, I was personal investment risk was half a million <clears throat> pounds, which is probably like 850,000 Australian dollars, I guess. Yeah, probably so more. <laughs> um, and it was just like this could, this could bankrupt me. Um, I, the, the team, they were great, but it was a year one. So we're a startup and most people were volunteers or whatever, um, except for a couple of us. And I think the team's mindset of how they deal with stress was one thing, which was a major, major thing. And I think selecting the team and not rushing the team while we got the job done and we made an amazing event and people loved it working with the right people is critical um and don't hold on to people because you're worried or scared that you can't replace them um and that's number one number two is mm, a book i read called uh, thinking in bets and i talk about this book a lot and i really recommend anyone listen to this and i'll give you a quick explanation of why i'm gonna talk about this but so my friend uh, martin tobias who was the ceo of upgrade labs once told me about this in passing in the back of a taxi going across London while we're on the way to see Carol, the exercise bike guys. And he was like, thinking your bets, dude, you've got to read this book. And I was like, why is this? He goes, because, you know, the, if you, he said, tell me the last bad decision you made. And I told him something or other, whatever it was, it was like, let's say, mm, going in, you know, going into partnership with some dude in business, you know, and he goes, why was that a bad decision? I said, because it went horribly wrong. I was like, it was like, mm, okay, interesting. He goes, you do realize that making a decision is different from the outcome. A decision should be based on the due diligence you do about going into business with this guy and looking into it. And the outcome of it not going back well is the outcome. It's not the decision because you made the decision with what you knew at that moment in time. The outcome was bad, not the decision. So he said, right, now tell me again, like, what's the best bad decision? You know, what's the worst decision you've made recently? And it's really interesting. So, so that when, when you look at it in this state, there's a couple of other things in the book I won't bore you, bore you with, I won't go into right now. But the point is, what I took from that was, what's the problem? What's the list of problems running this summit? You know, is this speaker not able to make it for this reason? Or has this supplier let us down with this? Or are the name badges not going to arrive? Or whatever the detail was, you know. Um, What's the problem? What's the solution? Okay. And then list out the solutions. Now, but the second part of the book comes in is like, it's written actually by Annie Duke, who's a famous female poker player. One of the best. She says, play life like a game of poker. So first of all, understanding your decision from the outcome is one thing. Second part is if you had a hand of cards that you knew had a 95% chance of winning, you would play that card, those cards, right? You would play that set of cards every single time because you know that 95 out of 100 times that hand is going to win, right? If you lost five times in a row with that hand, for instance, would you then go, oh, I've lost five times in a row. I'm not going to play that hand anymore. No, because... Maybe the sixth time is the time where it pays off and you're going to win. And the thing is, five times out of 100, it's going to go wrong. It might just be bad luck. Okay, so that decision of playing that hand might not have been bad. It, it was not bad. It was probably good. It's just the outcome was bad. So how this applies to what I learned from the summit and life in general and any biohacker in these things is, here's the problem, health issue, business issue, whatever it may be. 
what are the potential solutions? This, 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 this. And what are the percentage odds of that being the right decision? And then it says being emotional and stressed and causing my immune system to like go into haywire because I'm so stressed and pulling my hair out. I go, okay, here's the problem. Here's the potential solutions. Let's rate them in an order of percentage chance of being the winner and go with that. It takes the emotion out of the decision. And as a result, ever since that moment, I was really building a conference with hundreds of things going on and my whole reputation at stake if this thing flopped to going, okay, what are the best solutions and what are the odds? Completely lost the emotion from it. And after that, I was completely objective. That was my biggest learning from it. And I think, it, in fact, one of my biggest learnings from life in the last five years as well. Whoa, man, that is a crazy story. I don't know if you've seen me just then because I just took reflection on myself seeing me in, in the camera and I was so entranced. I was like, whoa, that's fantastic. Oh, man, thanks for sharing that. I think that's like such an important message. Um, it was beautiful. I like to um, switch gears a little bit because um, obviously you... Um, where the aura ring, what do you think about Gen 3? I don't know enough about it yet. I don't answer. know nothing just, about it yet. <laughs> like, just like other things going on in the world, whether I would or wouldn't. I mean, I don't know enough about it yet. Yeah, um, true. You just got back from holidays. <laughs> I wouldn't say holidays. Oh, yeah, I've mean, been working around Europe. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a great idea um, yeah. that they brought out a new version. It was about time. Other people are bringing things out that are similar. Fitbit and all these things are evolving quite quickly. They needed to bring something out now. They've been a long time, like off the back of this version. Um, I think there's some nice additions there. I also think that they're um, monetizing it a bit more. Now they're getting more mainstream and forgetting about the people that helped them early days, in, in my opinion. Um, but I, I love it as a product. I mean, it, like if there's technology biohacks, if there's two that I have supplements aside, it would be number one, blue blocking glasses. Number two, aura ring. I love them to bits. I love it to bits. It's like can turn anyone into a diagnostic machine and optimize so much of their health just from having one little thing on their finger that no one even knows what it is. Preach. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, preach. There's so many people that as, as soon as they get an aura ring, sort of just like if they pay attention to the results of there, just, just change their entire life. It's just insane yeah. to see. What, what are some of the biggest hurdles that you personally, like as far as what you were struggling with, um, have overcome with um, <coughs> bi biohacking and like investing in yourself? Okay, so I'm going to go down the health one first. Um, I was I started forming kidney stones nine years ago, ten years ago, something like that, and I was producing them and pretty quickly. Like every time they looked, I had another one, which is pretty pretty worrying considering the first thing I knew about it was when one stuck got stuck in my ureter, not urethra, ureter, coming out of the kidneys. It was there and it felt like someone was cutting me open from the inside for several days in a row while and I was on morphine in hospital. It was insane. I mean the passing of it was nothing. I mean like let's be honest, that just came out no worries. But um it was stuck there for days. And it really was like I was like I was possessed until like like a demon in me. So it was pretty stressful. <clears throat> and they said just drink more and avoid strawberries because of potential oxidants. That's all they told me. And then I had to do 24 hour pee samples, you know, multiple times to analyze the urine and all this stuff. It was horrendous, right? Yeah, I know. Right? Um, <laughs> and, and then I was really stressed about it and I was pretty chilled out before that and was a successful business guy. Um, and then what was it? I, and then afterwards, and I haven't talked about that bit of my story before actually on the podcast, but anyway, and then I got thrush around the filling in my mouth, which I, I talk about quite often. And I Googled thrush in a metal filling and it came up with mercury poisoning. So, you know, this is the traditional route of what I talk about. It's like I grab post-it notes, I stick them all up on the wall when the doctor said they couldn't help me. And I figured out what caused what. Point is, is that mercury stops certain enzymatic reactions from happening. It also can help with mineral deficiencies because it competes for the cell to stop magnesium and things getting into your cell, um, which can cause um, dehydration and chronic fatigue, blah, 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 and stress the liver. 
Um, and then I looked at, I found out that, well, I mean, I was peeing 30 to 50 times a day at the time and no one knew why I was. And they just said, oh, it might be prostate issues or a kidney, uh, um, a bladder problem and all this stuff. And then I started testing each mineral one by one because I heard that salt or minerals actually help you retain water or not. It turned out I was just dehydrated and I needed more minerals in my diet. And thus this finding this was so amazing for this Celtic salt was so amazing for health. Um, and then once I stopped the urination problem, I was like, well, why is this, why is my kidneys holding on to calcium oxalate, oxalates? Um, and, and they actually analyzed one of my stones for me. And then I found out that it was linked to leaky gut. And because I had had um, uh, several infections the year before, and I'd had so much antibiotics, I had like three, four months of antibiotics. And at one point I was taking two at one time, you know, I didn't know this. I didn't know this stuff at the point, you know, I was literally nuking my gut. The point is, is that I destroyed my gut. I, I probably caused leaky gut. And um, instead of my body dealing with oxalates properly and my liver being stressed, it couldn't deal with the oxalates. It meant they were getting into my bloodstream. My kidneys were then storing them and then they were coming out as kidney stones. They told me that you, once you get kidney stones, you've got them for life pretty much. I haven't, I, I, I peed out a few of them over the, the following year. Um, and touch wood, I haven't had one since. Now, I did have a, one lodged in my kidney for quite some time, whether that's been dissolved or gone, I don't know. And I haven't had a scan because I don't want to keep on having CT scans. This was many years ago. I haven't had one now for a very, very long time. And I was told that I would just have to put up with it for life. So that's an example where traditional medicine is amazing for emergency care. It can help you if you've had a car accident or if there's something major going on. But when it comes to chronic health, they really don't know enough. They know about some of the chemical, like the the processes that happen in the body but yeah that was that was pretty much reversed and you know it might catch me out you might see me in hospital in three weeks time after a monstrous stone but the point is i stopped forming them at the rate that i did reversed my gut issues reverse chronic fatigue sorted my brain fog out and kind of came alive again and now i look younger except for this bit of gray hair here, here. Um, <laughs> and ten, that's ten on his way off though <laughs> he's working on it <laughs> I, I am i am actually yeah, yeah so the point is, is you know don't accept when someone says something isn't reversible um or we don't know enough about that to do anything about it or when you start googling these symptoms and people say oh we don't know how to reverse this stuff you know really it's about common sense diagnostic and breaking things down and, and testing oh man that's just so beautiful i love it because it's so like it comes from a big place but it's so anal analytical logical rational as well I absolutely love it um mm -hmm. So what, what are some of yours? So obviously like you've been like through this journey of like optimization mm. and you've gotten to like an awesome level and like I aspire to be like you with all of um, like your, your knowledge and wisdom with everything and like your attitude towards it, which I find is quite fantastic. Um, what are your current personal goals? Um, it's really interesting. I mean, okay, so <laughs> it's like, where does the, it go from here, man? <laughs> no, I mean, in the in the last few, three four months, I I've always had a morning routine, and I have a tick list. I use the Things Three app. I have a morning routine where I tick off the things that I do to remind me. Um, but then a few months ago, a friend of mine, a successful friend of mine, recommended I read the Entrepreneur's Morning Miracle book, and um, and it it tells you about setting your morning up properly. You know, and it starts with silence. So it's, it's called the savers, silence, affirmations, visualizations, <clears throat> exercise, um, <clears throat> reading and scribbling savers. And I, I won't, I won't labor on this point, but the point is, is that silence, I always had a problem meditating because I've been a busy mental guy and I, I use Sensate and the Sensate device, which sits and vibrates on your chest, syncs with the, the audio and takes you into your body away from your brain. So I've always been good. But when I heard about the morning miracles and um, savers, the silence, I set my timer for five minutes and I just sit there in silence. And I can think I can do whatever I like. Now, these days, what I do is actually think about anything that's triggered me or upset me the previous day, triggered, and work through it and understand why it triggered me and what it tells me about me. Okay. So 
that's really helped me let go of a lot of stuff. Like really, I don't react to a lot of stuff. Even my brother said to me yesterday, he said, I said some negative stuff about you, like giving you feedback and you haven't responded in any way. I'm like, it's fine, dude. I mean, I take it on board. Thanks. And he's just like, what the hell is going on with my little brother? <laughs> um, so really, I then, I, so every month I then list out my goals for the month. I have goals for the years, goals for the month, goals for the week, goals for the day. Okay. So the do- goals of the day are basically tasks, three main tasks of the day. Um, so it's very structured. So for people listening to this, if you don't have a target, you're not going to hit it is number one. And so if you think people say, think about where you want to be in five years. Okay. Think about where you want to be in five years. Then think about where you want to be in a year and then think about where, what you would want to have done in a month and then in a week. And then each day, it's very, very easy. It's very easy. And if you dedicate an hour to sitting down and doing that and turning off your phone, just having a pen and paper and scribbling it down, that is the most important thing you can do. My goals are irrelevant, but what they are is I went from 59 kilos, 60 kilos to 72 kilos in nine weeks by increasing my food and optimizing my nutrition further. Um, I want to get to 78 kilos and I want to be bulkier. And not quite so thin so that's my my personal goal number one number two is to find my partner in crime um and um someone that wants to be grounding having coffee with me every morning and go half off grid and live in a hot country and, um, <laughs> and make some make some babies at some point um and yeah and, and i mean really the other thing was this while traveling this year i realized that you know i love london i love the people in it but I also love nature a lot more and disconnecting and having an apartment or place in somewhere like Cyprus or Croatia or something and being able to travel between the two, you know, that's, that's really my ultimate goal. Um, I will still be a biohacker. I like to think that more of a natural biohacker with some technologies um, opposed to just being, you know, recommending supplements and technologies all day, every day and being a marketing guy opposed to a health guy. You know, I want to be young as long as possible. And I think to achieve that, I really think my goal of being six months of the year in a hot and sunny place, three months somewhere else and three months in London is really the ultimate goal. And, you know, for people saying, oh, I haven't got that much money or I'm not that successful, you know, it's that's the state of mind. I mean, I, again, I started with nothing again um, and um, built up my company to a point and sold it, got some cash in the bank and then just followed my passion and, you know, the summit, I started with nothing. I had personal risk in the end, which cost me, you know, a fair amount. But the point is, is it's, it's, if you're a prison up here, you can get an Airbnb in some countries for £600 a month. Um, and um, it's completely achievable. And I know people that once I've been hanging around with them and whatnot, they realise that they've gone freelance and they work remotely and they, you know, travel around the world and stuff. And that's just because they realise that they don't have to be stuck in an office to get their salary. And I think with current world times, it's become more apparent that we can work remotely and more people are migrating in different areas as a result. So I think really my goals are in line with quite a lot of other people's. I just think I'm a little bit further along the line of actually realizing it because I've been doing this for, you know, four, four years now. Yeah. Oh man, that's so beautiful and so motivating and inspiring. And I think what's like awesome is, as well as you're saying, is like, you know, in terms of like biohacking, I mean, you saw the results when you were traveling. You could you literally measure it. So you're sort of making like the best biohacking decision. <laughs> you just don't have to get as many biohacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, don't forget that, you know, no one wants to be a hermit sitting in a wood cabin on his own. Oh, yeah. No, even if it's next to the beach or next to a lake on your own with no one around and just Instagram to connect with people like that's That's a bullshit life. Yeah. And I think really understanding the balance and using your common sense. Like for instance, I'll give you an example of how the balance is important. I do not use Bluetooth. I don't use AirPods. I did a post on it to hold myself accountable to never use them again. However, if I am on a trampoline and I need to squeeze in a book or listen to some music to find myself somewhere else, I will use them for five or six minutes. I'm not stupid to the point of like, I know they're bad, but it's a good convenience from time to time, not using them for hours on end. Do you know what I mean? It's like people are saying, well, you're a biohack and you live in the center of London or in the middle of London, you know, are you a biohack? Yes, because I know what to do to mitigate the risk from this. And so 
And then people say, oh, well, I bet you don't ever cheat or have a donut or have a cheesecake or eat non-grass-fed meat or whatever. Yes, I do. From time to time, I do. You know, like yesterday, I had an, I had an Eccles cake from the local bakery just because I wanted it. But it's the exception, not the rule. It's the AirPods I use them. It's the exception, not the rule. It's living in a city where it's smoky. I, I mitigate as much as I can. It's the exception, not the rule soon. Um, so, so really, it's, yeah, it's like you can get too involved, too stuck into it. And the, the problem is, is that the natural, more off-grid stuff isn't as sellable for, you know, mainstream biohacking, unfortunately. And you know, people want to be sold stuff or they want to buy this stuff and have that dopamine hit of having a new supplement through the door and doing, you know, the, the seven or eight fundamentals of health, like sunlight grounding, optimizing your day and sleep and proper hydration and, you know, getting rid of metal fillings or root canal treated teeth and optimizing your oral microbiome and making sure that you're moving every, every half an hour or an hour and having a rebounder near your desk or having a standing desk like I do here. It's just not as exciting, but but when you get into it and you start noticing the benefits are significantly better than taking that supplement and you're standing out on the grass looking at the sun while holding your bulletproof coffee, like the amount of hundreds of people every week that tag me in doing this because they feel so revitalized from it. Now that doesn't need marketing. It's automatically, you know, wanted. Now really, uh, again, like to stop rambling on, it's that I've been asked so many times where to start you know, which supplement to fix my gut for pep or which peptide to fix my gut or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, well, actually, this is where you start. You do the fundamentals. And I had so many hundreds of people time and time and time and time again, ask me this, that that's why I built the course, the health optimization digital program, because it puts the fundamentals in place that people need to do before they go and see a functional practitioner. It's the lifestyle changes and the simple hacks that people need to do before start spending money get those right and the body will flourish and if it doesn't 100 percent, then go and see a functional practitioner or work with one of these nutritional coaches you know um nutritional science guys like ryan carter or you know Marek doyle or someone like dr mark hyman or ranjan, ranjan chatterjee or any of these guys the point is if if you're not grounding <laughs> you're not hydrating you're not sleeping properly and not tracking it to know how to improve all of that stuff is pointless. Man, I'd love to just dive into the fundamentals like quickly if you have any other, because I know you shared quite a few, but if there was, Ooh. if there was some, if there was someone was like, you know, like you just don't want to skip, like if, if even you just like the ones that you just absolute musts to lock in, what, what, what would they be? Um, <clears throat> ones you wouldn't cheat on. <laughs> Um, if you have house lighting, fake lighting, or playing your mobile phone after sunset, blue blocking glasses are critical because you don't secrete your melatonin, your sleep hormone, if you are subjected to blue light. Blue light is our body's trigger to tell us that it's daytime and it's not supposed to sleep because if you sleep during the day, you might get eaten by an animal that's awake during the day, evolutionary speaking anyway. Yeah. So really optimizing your sleep or your day and your light is important. So, I mean, the, I'll run through the list just super quick and then you can pick out anyone that you want to explore if you like. So um, timing your day properly. Um, so that means eating at the right time, exercising at the right time. So you don't spike your uh, stress hormones um, and uh, spike your, your blood glucose before bed, for instance, hydrating properly, uh, sunlight and light optimization. I, you know, sunlight getting natural light or blocking fake light um grounding and nature um and what grounding does to our body physiologically and our energy production um breath work and oxygenation and why that's so important uh exercise and frequent movement how to tweak your your nutrition but not telling you what you can and can't eat um but more the kind of the, the overarching principles of how to guide um oral and dental optimization community and relationships and then final is higher purpose and our on our why our main motivator so those are the you know the kind of the 10 fundamentals um you know just to 
again, before you pick one, is like, if you're not sleeping properly, there's no point hydrating properly or grounding. <laughs> um, you know, you, you're just going to be moody and tired the whole time and your hormones will be all over the place. Yeah. If you don't hydrate properly and don't have electrolytes, your energy production, or should I say your energy utilization isn't going to be good. Your body's going to be in a stress state, um, which is why people get, you know, 30% cognitive decline from 5% dehydration. And if you've drunk coffee, if you've exercised, if you've been in a sauna, if you've drunk alcohol, you will be dehydrated in some form. It's that, that simple. So if you're not drinking mineralized filtered water, remineralized with Kelty salt, then your energy won't be as on point um, or your detoxification. Sunlight and grounding. Sunlight, when it hits our skin, it converts cholesterol into hormones, um, which means that, you know, why people are sunning their balls these days or using red light therapy on their balls because it increases testosterone uh, quite significantly, apparently. I mean, I notice it. Let's just say that. Um, notice the difference in the morning. Um, then um, breath work or breathing and oxygen. If you're under oxygenated, your body won't heal properly. If you think about in a very simple form, how if you have a plaster on a cup, if you keep the plaster on, it won't get air to it. It won't heal very quickly, but it will stop it bleeding. Once you rip the plaster off, it then heals much quicker because of the air and um, the body being able to do its processes. We didn't evolve with a plaster on, FYI. Um, <laughs> and so if you think about what that does to us on a cellular level, you know what happens if, um, if you go without oxygen for too long and what happens to us? Well, think about being chronically um under oxygenated for you know even if it's 10 percent over a period of time and what that does to our cognition and our immune system yeah. what's some of your um, favorite ways of oxygenating sorry for interrupting there I'll just no no that. no it's fine um nose breathing <laughs> very basic <laughs> yeah. um it, it, i actually i did a podcast with patrick mccowan recently it's on my instagram awesome. igtv i love patrick he's an amazing guy yeah, um it's great but Wim Hof is more about, if we're talking about the breathing element of what he does, is more about um, hyperventilating or over oxygenating. Um, it, obviously, there's mindset, there's cold exposure and things like that, which have a different thing, but we're talking about the breath work. Um, the problem is, is most of us are over, over breathing, um, where we're breathing too much through our mouths, taking in too much of a volume in one go. Um, whereas if we breathe through our nose, which is how we actually evolved, um, like for instance, you see the most unfit people after they've gone for a run, they'd be like, <laughs> like, like this. the athletic fit guy would be, it's measured breathing. It's filtered by microbiome in our sinuses. It's a certain amount behind here. This is for emergency breathing or for kissing or for eating or for other things that are also fun, um, but, it, but it's like fucking, <laughs> it's, but it's not, it's not for breathing as a, as the main thing. So the point is, is if you breathe through your nose, it's more measured. It means that you're so basically carbon dioxide and how we deal with carbon dioxide, actually carbon dioxide forces oxygen into the cell. Okay. So if you can't hold your breath for very long, you're not going to be having enough carbon dioxide to, get the oxygen into your cells. So you might be over breathing, but under oxygenated. That's the irony or the tug of war. If you nose breathe, you're more measured, your breath rate comes down. It means that you can deal with carbon dioxide better. And ironically, you become better oxygenated, which is why we evolved with eight to 10 breaths a minute. And if you look on your aura, it's probably 13 to 20 breaths a minute, 20 being pretty poor. Um, by nose breathing, so I used to mouth tape at night, put a piece of tape across my mouth, which yeah. is a post on my Instagram explains it. Um, that forces you to breathe through your nose, brings down your respiratory rate, helps you deal with ox uh, carbon dioxide better and oxygenates you better. That's my favorite route. And then once you become more used to that, you can walk down the road, keep your mouth closed, hold your breath on the out breath do 10 steps and you'll find that it's quite hard to start with and then you'll get better and better and better. You can do 10 steps, 15 steps, 20 steps. And there's ways of measuring it in the course. Actually, there's a, there's a, um, a way of testing to see how you can deal with oxygen and carbon dioxide um, and a way of measuring it as well. So that's my favorite way. And then obviously yeah. exercising like on my rebounder with my mouth tape, nose breathing, becomes easier and easier and easier. Whereas originally I would have to use my mouth. So that's the, the best way. And 
for like nootropics are great. Don't get me wrong. I love smart drugs. I like microdosing. I used to like macro dosing. I still do um, when it's legal. But the point is, is if you if you if you're not oxygenated or hydrated properly, your brain, your mental clarity, um, cognition won't be operating as smooth as it should be. So you're just taking nootropics that might make you feel a little bit better, but you could feel a lot better by doing breath work and uh, hydration. Just those two simple basic things like we breathe every day we drink every day people are doing it wrong they don't even realize it yeah it's just uh, like oh, i love how you literally just put the link then between like being able to have better effects of microdosing literally if you're hydrating properly and you've got good ex uh, oxygenation mm -hmm. through learning to breathe properly what do you it's, um, not it's not as sexy if you go oh guys you've got to breathe better and you've got to add a little bit <laughs> just like yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah right and do it every single day for the rest of your life oh exactly. what <laughs> but give me one of these devices that can help me measure my ketones please. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> that's so true what do you like to um microdose with i i use um uh, mushrooms a little bit to microdose yeah. with, and i quite like those well, psilocybin is good. I mean, mushrooms is the, the microdose for me. I don't generally like the LSD so much just because of a childhood um, episode I had with too much LSD and ended up in hospital. Um, yeah, I can and imagine. A policeman around me, uh, which I haven't talked about publicly before, but I was 16 and, and <laughs> did way too much LSD. Um, so I, I, I generally don't like LSD so much. I like mushrooms because it's much more natural. Um, and it just gives me, it helps my brain connect the dots. Um, and be more creative without feeling tilted at all. Um, my favorite smart drug is actually uh, anaracetam um, or phenylpiracetam, oxyracetam, which all play with the way that the brain deals with acetylcholine. Pretty much all smart drugs generally do um, deal with acetylcholine somehow in the brain, um, which is why supplementing with alpha gpc is really important and why it's in most nootropics actually or natural nootropics if you get anaracetam it almost let's just say opens up the brain for more acetylcholine to be effective so it's, it turbocharges cognition for, my, for me but microdosing is nice if i want to be doing brainstorming if i want to be thinking about strategies and things like that yeah no i love that man what do you what are your thoughts on testosterone as well <laughs> It depends in which form and, and, and in which context. I mean, you know, the difference between having low testosterone and not being interested in women to having high testosterone and just needing to instantly mate. You know, there's, there's something in between. Um, yeah, there, there's something in between. So I think if we're stressed um, and, you know, this is where grounding fits in, actually. If, if we're not grounding and we're relying on vitamin C for our antioxidants. Um, basically, grounding gives us free electrons. Those free electrons pair, pair with free radicals, which reduces inflammation and helps the body heal. Those free electrons, those electrons are vital for our mitochondria to be able to do their job with energy. And um, also we get, obviously, electrons from our food. Um, if we're not grounding, we're not getting a vital part of our energy formula. Think in very simplistic terms, a battery, positive and negative. Positive, the sun um, and photons from food and whatnot. Uh, electrons, the negative. Now, we evolved without shoes. We got those free electrons from the ground or we got free electrons from negative ions in the air when we're near a waterfall or near the sea, which is why, you know, when you stand near the sea, you feel so good, you're getting lots of negative ions. So the point is, is when you're grounding, it's so vital for your blood, because if you look at um, a share I've done on Instagram, you'll see the red blood cells clump together before grounding. And then afterwards, the red blood cells equidistant, almost like the electrical charge is back mysteriously. Um, <laughs> Now, what, what this does is it brings the body out of a sympathetic state and puts it into a parasympathetic state. That means from a stress to a less stressed or non-stressed. Now, there's actually 23 studies now on grounding, including peer-reviewed studies. That means that, you know, really smart people agree that it's real, um, which is what peer-reviewed means, um, um, as well as worldwide anecdotal in-clinic evidence um, but um, what that does is if someone has low cortisol and you get grounding, 
it would bring the cortisol up to baseline. If you have high cortisol, i.e. super stressed and whatnot, grounding will bring you back down to baseline. So if you have cortisol issues, you get anxiety, you get stressed, grounding is the best thing you can do. Now, why this is important is if your cortisol is constantly high, your stress hormones, obviously, which means your other hormones will be out of whack, which means your testosterone will be lower than it should be. Okay, so you can supplement with testosterone. No, no, testosterone gel. I've tried just, just about everything. I've tried the Psalms that help open up the receptors for testosterone. So you get ridiculously horny and put on those of weight very, very quickly. I've tested all of these things, but without grounding, you haven't got the fundamental in place because your own hormone production isn't going to be correct. So testosterone is a big driver. It's an indicator if you've got low testosterone, it's basically saying, I'm down regulating your energy and you're not ready to mate. That's it. So if you then supplement with it, great. It's basically going, we're going to stick some nitrous oxide in this engine before it's even got fuel in, which <laughs> might, blow up, might blow up the engine. Um, and oh, and also if you're supplementing with testosterone, obviously you're pretty much infertile um, as well. So, <laughs> so you know. Uh, That's such a good way to put it. That's so simple. I love how you he pieced that together. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. If I, if I supplement with it and I get ridiculously high levels, it's great, but it's fake. Great. It's much better to optimize. And, you know, if you do need a, a you know, if you do need a bump, then that's great. I mean, hormone replacement therapy, uh, TRT, whatnot is, is great. And bodybuilders love it for getting big muscles, but you know, you've got to ask yourself, why do you need it in the first place and, and fix that because that's the longevity. That's the sustainable route. Um, in my opinion, but don't get me wrong. I, I have dabbled for many years. I did. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool that you've tested all that and like helped understand it. I mean, like where would the whole biohacker spirit be without it? What is, um, I've got two more questions. One is like one first, first one is what does sort of spirituality, um, mean to you? What does spiritual, what, sorry, spirituality mean to you? Mm. Hmm. I'm not the most spiritual guy, yeah. but I'm also not the most unspiritual guy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really interesting question to try and think about in real time. Um, I think really for me, while, you know, to, to think phys um, like, let's just think deep for a second. Is there a point in space where you can stand and put your arms out and touch the end? Okay. And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. It's a pretty profound thought, right? Okay. And if you can touch the end, the wall, what's on the other side of that wall? Does that mean that it goes on forever and ever 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 and ever, right? Now, our machines, these bodies, these this bit of meat on this skeleton um on this like i quoted the other day on instagram like this ball this ball of rock f floating through space um it's pretty amazing to think how finely tuned we are and that space can go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever i mean like never ending like like we can't comprehend that so why i i'm not saying i do believe or don't believe i think that it is pretty amazing regardless of the situation we're in right so there is something maybe whatever that is whether that's our own higher purpose or our own driver our own why or we're just completely in the matrix who knows <laughs> point is whatever whatever spirituality is to you or me it's irrelevant it's really that we're in an amazing place and we have one chance on this planet to enjoy it. And even if you're chronically sick or underperforming or life is on top of you, whatever it may be, is enjoy the ride. Because regardless of spirituality, like you're calling your higher purpose, it's your chance on this planet to go off and do exactly whatever you want to do. Like, and I think to close on this point is imagine for a second you had an all over bodysuit, a virtual reality bodysuit. Okay, where you could do anything you wanted on in the virtual reality. You could go anywhere, you could do anything, you could skateboard, you could skydive, anything. What would you do? Well, 
We are there right now. That is life. We have this opportunity. So don't spend your life sitting at a desk in an office wishing that you had more money to be able to get abroad when you can pick up a ticket for 300 bucks, you know, depending on getting being able to get out of the country. Thank you, lockdowns. Um, you know, I think, like to think that that's pretty amazing and it's a pretty amazing opportunity to do what you love. And the spirituality thing is, you know, I like to think there is something going on. I don't know. I haven't explored it. I don't think anyone ever will. And we can spend lives going, our lives going round and round in circles trying to figure this stuff out. And as a result, detract ourselves from actually having an amazing opportunity to do whatever we want. That's it. That's my answer. Man, that is beautiful message. Beautiful message. Thank you so much for sharing that. That has uh, definitely inspired me. I'm feeling all motivated. It's like almost bedtime, but I'm like, ah, I'm like pumped up after that. <laughs> Thanks for sparking my cortisol, getting me excited, man. <laughs> so I just got like one more question, man, lead, sort of leading on from that is for people who are, you know, success driven, career driven, who want to like kick ass, who want to achieve their purpose, you know, li live life as best as possible and like, you know, either build businesses and just feel a real sense of achievement and ah, I made it. What is just some things It doesn't have to be biohacking and it may, may be biohacking. It depends. It's up to you. But if someone just sort of come up to you and had the question in terms of like, would you just give me a, a golden piece of advice distracted from your brain? What, what are some of the, what's like maybe the first thing that like comes to your mind and maybe a, a good message to share for that person? I will answer. Mm -hmm. Don't take life too seriously because we're never going to get out alive. Um, that would be the first thing. I mean, and I'll tell you why I say that. I have a friend um, his name's Jack. He's a neuroscientist. He's a psychedelic specialist. He does DMT in labs as stu for studies or like all of these things. Um, and he lives life like it's a complete game. You know, he'd be naked on the top of a rock wearing a monocle with his hair shaved on the sides, you know, and just like, he's just such a like amazing character. And I mean, I understand it's his journeys that have helped him become to this point, but the point is it's like, kind of like, you know, you can be free. You can be completely free and completely happy and be crazy and wacky. And it doesn't matter. Like if you let go of what people think about you and I, I'm learning this more and more and more like, because like mm, when you let go of people caring about what you think, you, you caring about what people think, one, you become freer to do what you want because you don't care what they think. It stops you from being limited, so limited. Um, and the experience of life goes up much more, you know. Um, but, you know, it's quite, it's not really a biohacking thing. But the thing is, is a lot of biohackers don't necessarily, they, they say they meditate and they say that they practice forgiveness or abundance and things like that but really inside there's a lot of turmoil they're not really in the right place yet because they're still looking for external stimulus to make them feel better even if they say they do plant journeys and stuff so i think if you can work on your issues your brain lets go your cortisol comes down and your body starts healing because it doesn't think it's running away from a pretend threat um so i really think that you know try to find yourself. And I think traveling for me has really helped with that and getting away of the day-to-day -day noise, but still focusing on the big important things. Um, and the other thing is if the sun goes down and you're playing on devices, wear some fucking blue blockers. <laughs> you... like, geez, get, um, a, get yourself an O-ring for the love of God. <laughs> like, oh, I sleep fine. Even if I have a coffee before I go to bed, like, no you, no, you don't. Like, you feel like you are, but you are not. You are literally telling your body to stay awake and it's stimulated. Oh, no, I know me. I know I sleep well after coffee. You don't. You don't. Like, <laughs> and really, like, track your sleep, have a coffee, see what it does, and then see how much better you feel after a week of not having that coffee before bed. It's like a tug of war. It's like basically saying, I don't want to smoke while smoking a cigarette. It's like, 
<laughs> I recently had one of my clients, I just want to share this real quick because it was a similar sort of message and he sort of just had these breakthrough things happen, uh, break, breakthrough things happening recently, just like his relationship with the alcohol. And he's like, man, I just want to message all of my friends, quit drinking your fucking beers and buy an O-ring for goodness sake. <laughs> like, uh, and that just brought that up, yeah. man. That's so funny. Man, you said such a beautiful message then as well. Like that was, I don't want to like not put that aside. Like that was such a beautiful message that you said. And also, yes, bringing in the signs of like focusing on your sleep is so important, man. Tim, this podcast was literally insane. Thank you for coming on straight after a bulletproof coffee. Five minutes of not being radiant and sunshine and you look gorgeous, man, the whole time. So thank you. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so everyone is listening, man. If, if they want to find you out and like uh, look at some of your stuff and, you know, potentially come to some of the World Optimizational Health Summits and things like that, where can they find you to follow your content? Um, I'm most active on Instagram, which is Tim Biohacker. Um, but you know what Instagram's like, it keeps on penalizing people for no reason or actually some good reasons with some people are a bit extreme anyway so find me on instagram um i'm also on telegram with a more candid chat you know the route um and um summit health optimization summit.com with an s because i'm british not with a z or a z depending where you're from um and twitter and linkedin and all these places but yeah if you google tim biohacker i'm pretty sure um something will come up these days yeah and i'll um link all the link all of those bad boys below as well so tim man yeah it was an absolute pleasure thanks for coming on to the show thanks for having me